Okay. Okay, everyone, welcome to uh, Cedar Lane Sunday School. And we are studying today at Second Samuel. And it's a very good uh, lesson that we have today. And we'll have to look a, a little bit at the background. This is where Nathan, it says he condemns David and we know meaning to condemn is to pass judgment on David. But first we have to look, let's look back at see why he is condemning David at this particular time and why he used this as a parable to uh, condemn David or pass judgment. And we, we want to call it, a, it was found in 2 Samuel 11. If you all have time today, read that chapter and it'll tell you about what David did at this particular time, what, that what happened, what, you know, to bring this on. And uh, of course, we know that da the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart, but still David committed sin just like we do, but he was forgiven of those sins. But we'll find out in this lesson that it's sometimes even though that you are forgiven for your sin, there is still some punishment, you know, that uh, sometimes from God, but everything, every bad thing that happens to someone, that's not saying that it's a punishment from God. It's not for us to judge or say that's what that is. But uh, this was particular to, uh, for David, it was a punishment from God. Because David took something that somebody loved, but God took something that he loved. Now, what it was, David, David and Bathsheba, and I know you all have probably heard this story, and I did look up what a story meant. I thought, oh, is that a fairy tale? No, a story is a, an account of something that's happened in the past. So it reminds me of, uh, I thought of this when I was saying this lesson, my little granddaughter, Mackenzie, she would say, when she'd spend the night with me, she'd say, Mimi, Tell me a story about long ago. You know, when I used to tell, when we go to bed, she wanted me to tell her a story about long ago. And I'd tell her things that happened to me when I was a child. She loved that. Sometimes I would make some up, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> that going through the woods and this and that and the other. But uh, I mostly told her things that had happened to me when I was a child. And I miss that. She's 14 now. She don't want to hear Mimi's stories about long ago. But anyway, David, most of the time the kings go to war. But at this particular day, he didn't go to war with his soldiers and he stayed home. Mistake number one. And so he was on the top of the palace walking around and he could probably see everything because I'm sure it was a high place. And he looked down and he saw this uh, beautiful woman, Bathsheba, and she was bathing. And uh, so he really liked her. And he sent someone to see who she was. Well, they told him who she, who she was, that he was, uh, she was the wife of one of his, uh, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> In his uh, army. A leader in his army. Yeah. And so his name was Uriah. And uh, so David took her, you know, Uriah was gone off to battle. So David took her to be, well, he didn't, she wasn't his wife yet, but they committed adultery and she became pregnant. Well, David, now this is sin number two. But that was sin number two. He gets himself in a lot of trouble here. You know what it reminds me of? First we practice to deceive. What is it? Oh, what a tangle web we weave. But first we practice to deceive. Now this is what happened to David here. He was just getting more and more and more in trouble here. But anyway, he uh, tried to... <laughs> tried to get Uriah to come home and when Uriah came home he tried to get him to go to his house and be with his wife so they'd think the baby was his well Uriah wouldn't do it he was a dedicated man he said my my uh 
soldiers are sleeping out in the fields and the tents. So why should I go home? And they have not had the comfort of home like I did. Well, they got him drunk. And that still didn't work. So he didn't go home to sleep with his wife. So David, this is the worst thing he did. He told his uh, captain of his army, he said, put Uriah on the front lines of the war, you know, the fighting, so he can be killed. And I can have Bathsheba, you know, so that's what happened. So now we are up to this point. And we're talking about here that uh, someone that has a whole lot, but they want something else. Maybe for somebody, somebody that doesn't have a whole lot, they want it. You know, and that goes on today also, not just in this this uh, Old Testament. It goes on today. I tried to think of some good examples, and I, I really couldn't think of any. Y'all might have an example, you know, that you're thinking of that where someone uh, just didn't have enough, you know, and they wanted what somebody else had. And, huh? <laughs> well... No politics, no politics, no. <laughs> well, there is, a, I didn't think of a, no politicians, but, you know, I thought of people that, even with uh, our day and time, we have plenty in this country. And, but do we help someone that doesn't have plenty? Not that we take away from, but I think the lesson here too is for us to share with what we have also. And David, though, he had all these wives and other women, and but still he didn't have enough. He wanted Uriah's wife, and so he took her. So let's go on. Let's read about what we're talking about today. And this is found in... Uh, 2 Samuel 12, 1 through 9, and 13 through 15. But really and truly, you need to read this whole chapter because it will really tell you more. David wasn't just punished by losing his son. He lost all of his wives, and, you know, they, the Lord gave his wives to everybody publicly. And so anyway, let's go on. But you'd have to read the 12th chapter of, of Samuel to find that out, the whole 12th chapter. Okay, the Lord sent Nathan to David, and listen to this. Can you imagine now, and I have had to do this, going to your boss and telling them something that they have done wrong, and you don't know what's going to happen, or am I going to get fired? And here, in this case, he didn't know if he was going to get killed, you know. And the prophet Nathan hadn't been, I didn't know about that until I read it in my lesson that Nathan hadn't been heard of, of until this time. I didn't know that. Did anybody else know that? that but in a prophet had to tell people about their sins. That was one of the, uh, one of their, well, you'd call it a job. That's what he was supposed to do. So he went to, to David telling him about his sin, not knowing what was going to happen to him. And so it reminds me of, uh, I'm sure he had to pray and ask the Lord to help him through this. Now, this is a little bit of an example of me, but where I had to really pray and ask the Lord to help me, it wasn't, I won't tell you what I had to tell my boss wrong because it's not very good for me to tell that. But uh, this reminds me of the time that when I was in my Baptist church, I was working the Women's Missionary Union, and I was the assistant director of the whole uh, association. And it, my, one of my jobs was to, once every once in a while, we would have a Bible study. I mean, a book study. And one of my responsibilities was to teach this book. And believe it or not, people, I would not get up in front of anybody and say anything. I was so backward. But I had come out of my shell a little bit. And so it became my time to teach this book. And I'm not just talking in front of a bunch of women. It's a whole church full of pastors and everybody was there. And 
this is how I know that Nathan, how Nathan failed when he had to pray and ask the Lord to help him through this. It has nothing to do with being killed or anything like that. But to me, that was really, really something hard for me to do. But the Lord did help me through that. Of course, I probably did a lot of reading, you know, because I was and probably quivered voice and all that. But anyway, what my point is, if you pray and ask the Lord to help you, just like in Nathan's case, he will help you do what you have got to do, whether, no matter how scared you are. Just like the time, one time, the preacher at this, my Baptist church, be it wasn't real, probably about this size, asked me to dis dismiss in prayer in the altar. And I had never done that. All I've been ever said was the Lord's Prayer. I thought my knees would not hold me up, but the Lord helped me through that. So let's just keep that in mind. But anyway, we're not going to get all this done if I don't go on. It says, now here's what Nathan told them. There were two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one little new lamb he had bought. He raised it and it grew up with him and his children. He shared his food, drank from his cup, even slept in his arms. So it was like a daughter to him. So he's trying to tell David here how much he thought of this little lamb. Now a traveler came to the rich man and I thought this was really terrible. But the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had come to him. Instead, he took the ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. Now, how terrible was that? That was just like what David had did. He took Bathsheba. David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, as surely as the Lord lives, this man who did this must die. He must pay for that lamb four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity. Then David said, then Nathan said to David, you are the man. Can you imagine what courage it took for Nathan to tell David that he was that man? Then I probably, he was really scared at this point because he was going to have to, you know, condemn the king. You are the man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I anointed you king over Israel. Now, here's, here again, the Lord has reminded David all that he had done for him. And then David had sinned against him again. And he said, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you all Israel and Judah. And if all this had been too little, I would have given you even more. So he's telling David here, if what I gave you wasn't enough, I would have even gave you more if you had wanted it. Because, you know, here again, David and the Lord had a good relationship. He was the man after God's own heart. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what evil is in his eyes, you struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. So here David I mean, admitted to what he had done. He asked for forgiveness here. And he said, I have, he realized what he had done, that he had sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, the Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die, but because by doing this, you have shown utter contempt for the Lord. The son born to you will die. After Nathan had gone home, the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife had born to David, and he became ill. Now, we look at this here, and we wonder why the child, you know, he, why did the child, he was an innocent, you know, why did he have to die? But, you know, I look at this at different times, different ways. I remember one time, uh, my niece, she had this little boy, little sweet little boy, Jeremiah was his name. 
he was eight. And him and his cousin were playing with a gun. You know, back not, it should never have happened. They sneaked in the house, you know, and it was a shotgun. Well, his cousin shot him, killed him. And of course, she was pregnant with uh, another little boy. But, and you look at this like this, why did that child have to die? And same way here. You know, sometimes I think when things like that happen, not always, don't get me wrong, because I'm not one to judge and say why children die. But you never know what that child, when he grew up, you never know what heartache that child could have been to that mother, you know. And same way with David here. He never knew what this son was going to be when he grew up because David had some mean sons. If you'll read on, you'll find out that he really had some, some mean sons. You know, one of them even wanted his own sister. And so we never know with this child what might have been. So he, sometimes if you, and, they, and my niece said that also. She said, you know, she she said that, you know, and she got, I don't know how she got over that because she had already just lost a little six weeks old baby before uh, she got pregnant with this other one. And then when she had this other one, he was born with autism. So she's really had a lot of struggles in her life, but she's close to the Lord. And you know, that's what's, that's what's really so good. It's Tanya, huh? And, uh, but anyway, uh, we wonder about things like that. And you know, I don't think if we wonder, it's the same thing as questioning the Lord. I think the Lord gives us, you know, we can wonder why this happened or why that happened. That, like I said, I don't think it means we're questioning the Lord. I'm about to come to a close, Danny. <laughs> I was wondering if anybody else has anything to say on this lesson. Just read the 11th and 12th chapter. And you know, uh, if you get back in the Old Testament and you begin reading the Old Testament, you find some real interesting things out. Things you wouldn't be, you'd be surprised that are in there. But, uh, you know, this one, there was something in my book that I wanted to read about, am I, am I guilty? This. We frequently have children on campus, so we all need to slow down in our driveway and parking lot. I, I nodded in agreement as I read the email from the manager facilities manager. I had seen co-workers driving too fast around the road that curved to our office. I tried to suppress my irritation. Why can't they just slow down? A few days later, I pulled in the parking lot in a rainstorm. I saw headlights in my rearview mirror as I parked. The facilities manager was leaning his head out the window as I stood in the rain. David, you need to slow down. So he didn't think that meant him. You know, it means everybody else. And I'm so guilty of mingling of saying that. We see somebody breaking the law or, you know, it says, and this is really what irritates me. And I'm awful. You know, when you're coming back here, it says right lane ends. Now, these people that stay in that right lane and come up and try to get in front of me, no. Don't you try. You have had plenty of time to get back there like I did, you know. So anyway, I think that some people, just like this person here, he didn't think, he said flabbergasted. I mumbled an apology and retreated myself. It had never once entered my mind that the warning email might apply to me. So, you know, that's the way, and you know, I think some of all of us sometimes to that point might be that way. You know, I always tell my uh, children they didn't want to hear it. And I'm, I try to do this. If it says 65 miles an hour, I try to go 65 miles an hour. Not, not 70. I know you can go five miles over and it's okay. But, you know, the law is meant 
for all levels. When you're going through a construction site, 40 miles from there, they have that up there for a reason, you know, because it could save your life and one of the workers' life, you know. And I don't, this was in here in my lesson, and I don't know why, because it had nothing to do with David. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right. But anyway, I just thought it was something that I wanted to bring up. Well, I guess that's all I've got today. I hope you all have enjoyed this lesson. I enjoyed studying it and reading back in the Old Testament. So just try to read the 11th, 12th chapter of 1 Samuel.